The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. on Tuesday morning. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading right now, and you have markets picking things up in negative territory. S&Ps right now, you're negative by about 25 points on the session. Yesterday, quite an acceleration to highs at about 11 a.m. Eastern time. From there, we've seen lower price action. We close out the action last night at about 4,120. 4 we're down a bit, just off the pre-market session lows. We made it about 6.30 this morning. NASDAQ 100, 12,855. We were above 13,100 briefly yesterday before a little bit of a sell-off to end the session. Dow, negative 168. Right now, you got the Russell, negative by 10. Bitcoin, trading with the market, negative action. You have Bitcoin, negative 205 points, dollars, trading at 22,800. Crude, Hanging out at about $93, quite an acceleration yesterday, man. You're talking about a $9 move in crude from about 102 down to almost $92, more than a $9 move, uh, $92.42, and we've just been chopping around. Pretty remarkable that we've just been chopping around since 9 a.m. yesterday at this price level. All of that acceleration from last Friday's close to where we opened futures at $98 crude, lower, lower prices at the pump. Gold contract catching a bid this morning. Check out the gold contract. We're up $15 at $18.02. You have some great action going on in the yen. I'll pull that up in a moment. You get the silver contract up a couple pennies at $20.39. And notes and bonds, we got higher price and low, lower yields. And folks, I think we're almost at 2.5%. We're probably not quite there just yet because we did pull back a hair. 2.55, we'll call it, 2.548 to be exact, 2.55%. We're at 3.5%. Remarkable, the bounce that we're getting in the bonds, but boy, we had quite a move, okay? So when you talk about the move we had, right, whether you just go back to the beginning of the year, we were trading at 131 on the 10-year, you make it down to 114, and you're back to 121, just from the beginning of the year, taking a Fibonacci, okay? We've just gone through the 382 of that entire move, you know, where'd we start? You could say that we started December 21st. Okay, you could make a case that maybe we started on March 7th. There was a real acceleration. Let's see where that Fibonacci lines up. Yeah, we're coming into the 50% potentially of that area. The moves have been pretty large on the way down. Even if we're getting bounces, they would be large on the way up. But boy, we just moved a full percentage point in about six weeks, a full percentage point in six weeks uh, on the tenure. It makes sense, though, folks. We got the Fed on 75 basis point hike cycles, right? Moving a percentage point here and there, moving from a point uh, to 3.5%. The moves are going to be large when the Fed is hiking things that dramatically. And uh, the yen, yes, jumping over. So U.S. dollar yen right now. We had our man Teddy Cakes that on yesterday, talking these markets, man. Look at this move right back to where we were in terms of the highs of May 9th. Quite an acceleration to lower prices, man. You check out the 15-minute, right? We've just been accelerating. You make a low at about 10 p.m. Eastern time last night. We've been chopping around right near 131 since that price level. But, boy, quite a pullback on that yen and the gold contract, of course. I'm going to love that action pulling back a bit. But just like on the note and bond, note and bond market, you know, the moves have been so dramatic. 115 up to 140, folks. I'm not even a Forex trader, and I understand that is a move, man. You're talking about a 25-point move on a 115-point um, currency pair, okay? I mean, let's let's check out where the euro U.S. dollar is as well. Catching a little bit of a bounce to 102, but we got a lot of technical traders out there listening, right? Check it out. I mean, all we're doing, folks, these bounces are so huge. But the trends, we're, all we're doing is staying within some forward form of a trend. You know, where do these line up? Let's let's line up on the lower board boundary. Just a line, please. There we go. Pretty well-defined channel. Okay? Keep that in mind when you're getting these bounces, man. Look at the Euro US, US dollar channel line that I have up there. Textbook. 
how many tops and how many bottoms do you need to match up with parallel lines in basically a negative 45 degree angle? And meanwhile, you know, this is pretty cool as I check this out, man. We'll see what happens as the euro gets up to this area. But you start hitting 103, and you're talking about coming into an area that has been upside uh, resistance in the euro US dollar in a big way. We jump over to the VIX this morning, finally catching a little bit of a bid. Now, we've, bought it, we've gotten a couple bounces. All right, but you do catch quite a bounce, man. We made it down to 21.33 as the market soared into Friday's close. Right now, we're trading at 24.10 right now as the VIX is going to be up 5.5% to kick things off. Okay, let's jump around to stories of the day. We got companies out with earnings, big week of earnings across the board. Uber out with their numbers and some strong numbers from Uber. They beat on revenue. They're still losing money. The stock spikes about, what is it, $3.20 now? So you're talking about a solid 13% pop at the open for Uber shares. This thing's gotten punished in a big way. Uh, now, you are going to open right now at about $28. Okay, so you could, going into this number, man, things were getting pretty dicey. We, we did have this at one point in my newsletter. Ended up getting stopped out of it. Um, whoops, excuse me. But, you know, coming into this, this might be breaking out of its channel line. That's what, because look at this action you had going into this earnings event, okay? And we're going to open at 28 right now, right? And on the downside, you know, you can see that similar fashion, we were pretty well defined there, all right? Didn't quite make it down to that low this past time. You hit 20 bucks a couple occasions, 1990, 2460, you get an acceleration coming into that number, and we popped to $28, and just like that, you're back to March prices in Uber, now, getting into their numbers, ridership defies inflation. Not hitting Uber just yet. Revenue increases 105% to $8.1 billion. Gross bookings reach a record, $29.1 billion for Uber. Revenue more than doubled to $8.1 billion in the second quarter. The market was only looking for 7.4, folks. We talked about yesterday, right? You had the likes of Roku getting punished because they missed on revenue by like 30%. Of course they should be punished if you missed by 30%. Intel missed by almost 15%, and that's a, a company taking in tens of billions of dollars. Uh, but nonetheless, that's almost a 10% beat on revenue for that company. Last quarter, this is their CEO, I challenged our team to meet our profitability commitments even faster than planned, and they delivered. So when the three months ended, Uber reported gross bookings, which encompass all of their businesses, ride hailing, food delivery, and freight increased 33%, man. Just big numbers. Uh, EBITDA, I think that is, $364 million. So 122 million people use the platform monthly. The market was only looking for 120.5. Rides versus delivery, where they are. You're talking about black is the rides, okay? And you're talking about pink is their delivery business. Uh, so, yes. Yes, that's right. So black is the rides, pink is their delivery business. And you can see that the rides business creeping back in 45.9%, almost inching up over deliveries. I mean, check out the second quarter of 2020 when no one was ride hailing. I mean, that food delivery business really saved them during the recession. They've got punished, man. But I imagine at some point they'll come back. But those, those... Those fees, man, they get you. All right, market coming back a bit. We're only down by 16. We'll be coming back. Talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network, folks. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by 18. NASDAQ 100, negative by 94 points in the Dow, negative by 117. S&P sitting right at about 4,100 right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV at 12 noon. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, they break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups using options. Every trade they talk about, folks, has defined risk in it. Check it out at 12 noon Eastern time. And we still got a big week of earnings. And, of course, we've got non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, big week. A lot of names with, with earnings. Now, not the top-tier uh, high-profile names that we got last week, but a good, solid week of earnings. Today's show, we got three really good ones for you today, Tommy. We're going to look at AMD, Starbucks, and Airbnb today. So, Three, you know, Tuesday, this is the highest profile day of the week for earnings. There's a lot of numbers, uh, a lot of second tier names, but not today, Tommy. These are three big ones. Those are great stocks, man. I'm going to be checking out the program as usual. Uh, I was just talking about, I think it was Airbnb yesterday, going through some of the equities that were coming up on their earnings this week. I mean, you talk about the pullbacks across the board. Pretty sure they're under their IPO price, even Airbnb trading at a 111 off 86. Uh, the week chugs on. We got, of course, non-farm payrolls, Kevin, on Friday. We got CPI next week. Uh, we haven't talked to you since last Thursday, but it was pretty much marching on on Thursday. On Friday, we accelerate higher. What's your general take with the S&P sitting at a pretty lofty 4,100 right now as we make it through? And, and we almost did better than making it through last week, right? Those are some pretty strong earnings from the biggest companies in the world. We're sitting at 4,100. But I say to myself a little bit, man, we're getting to these levels with everything going on. Seems like we're in pretty good territory with a price level of 4,100 when the last CPI print we got was 9.1% and the last interest rate hike we got was three quarters of a point from the Fed. Yeah, you're well. You're you're right, except that the market 
is getting a little more sophisticated than that, Tommy. What do I mean by that? Well, look at where the TNX was, right? It's down from 3.4 to 2.5. Look at the dollar, down from 109 to 105. Look at crude oil, 130, then to 120, now 94. Look at soybeans, 1780 to 1394. Corn, 824 to $6. Uh, Wheat, 1300 to 780. All these commodities, all these, everything that scared the market, higher yields, higher U.S. dollar, higher crude oil, they've all come down significantly. Where should that show up eventually? In inflation data. It hasn't yet, but you, you, the, the world thinks that lower inflation or that inflation has peaked. And look at food and energy and where that will filter into everything else in the economy. I think that's what uh, stock buyers are taking comfort in. Tommy, and just look at Pinterest this morning, right? They missed on earnings, missed on revenues, but down at these low levels, which a lot of these growth stocks are down at some pretty beat up levels, there's there's activist activity, right? In that name, now the stock's up twenty percent. So that there's a lot of things going on, a lot of money getting put to work, a lot of uncertainty becoming less uncertain, Tommy. Now, we have, we have a couple hurdles between now and the end of the year. Climbing the wall of worry is one thing. Right now it looks like we're climbing the wall of no way, no way can we do this. But here we are, Tommy. And it's happening, man. So that's all that matters, exactly. Uh, And some pretty important numbers as we come into Friday with the jobs number, non-farm payrolls, and then CPI next week. You brought up the tenure, man. Pretty amazing, right? We go from 3.5% to 2.5%, Kevin. Do you now there's there's two battles of it of course we have the the fed hiking and the market pricing and that impact on interest rates and and yields across the board and then of course you have two quarters of now decreasing gdp weighing on the interest rate what's your general take on why and it's a million dollar question across the board man why have rates gone from 3.5 to 2 2 excuse me, to 2.5 um, but what's your general take on those two influences man as we deal with the fed is that is that an indication of where the ch- the chairman was last week saying, you know, we're going to be data dependent and we're not going to just be hiking I- I- in a ridiculous cycle. Or is that the GDP or is it both of them kind of battling each other? I think what yields are, are showing is that the economy is slowing. And I think we're, I'll, I'll start this conversation with, we're in a recession. Now, once you say that word, there's a lot of different levels of a recession. It can be a very deep, very ugly recession. It can be a very slight recession. But two quarters of negative growth is a recession. That is a broad term that can be used a lot of different ways. But that, that, that's the case. Now let's work from there. We still have a – remember, Tommy, when all the stimulus started to hit the market and they started to slowly pull it out, everyone expect a flood of – of uh, people coming off the sidelines back into labor force. Turns out it takes a little longer for all these things to happen. I think a, a lot of the changes, we live in a microwave world now, Tommy, where everyone wants everything to happen really fast. The stock market, with, with high-frequency trading, it discounts things quickly and all the way to the worst-case scenario. That's what th- this market did. That's what we're working our way up from Uh right now so there's a lot of pressures some things go into the market very slowly some things go into the market very quickly tommy and i think you're seeing that play out here i can't wait for some of those data points that the fed is waiting for man because if they're waiting for the data the whole market's going to be waiting for the data uh earnings are part of that data of course and then of course those big economic numbers well kevin we appreciate the time as always we get the s&p sitting right at 4100 uh and we look forward to amd starbucks and airbnb at 12 noon eastern time today man you have a great one we'll talk to you tomorrow thanks for having me on tommy have a great day always a pleasure man i'll be watching and folks tune in 12 noon eastern time today fast market right here on tiger tv uh and with that let's take a look at those three stocks we'll do a little uh teaser so amd you know, I had these lines even before Kevin was talking about it, man. These trend lines, AMD from December, 164, you have a high back there. It's been lower lows and lower highs. The one thing is we did just break out of it. And this looks very similar, actually, to Uber, if you take a look at it, right? 
what happened? I'm going to take this off on Uber. And Uber just came out and beat. And you're talking about uh, a channel line pretty consistent. And what did you do? You just broke above that channel line coming into earnings. Taking a look at AMD again. Check it out, right? You just broke above that channel line, man, coming into earnings. AMD is down about 80 cents right now, trading at $96. You have a $6 and about 70 cent move priced into their earnings. What is that? 7% move priced into their earnings after the bell tonight. Okay, now that follows some pretty dismal earnings from a Intel last week. Then they're going to be talking about Starbucks. We've got a couple Fibonacci lines on here. Let's see what we're dealing with. Let me back this out. Okay. Uh, so this is looking at the full Fibonacci run from Starbucks' is low from 50 to 126. Yeah, we've, we've pulled back. I'm going to take that off. And then let's look at the bounce we're getting just from the pullback we've had this year. Starbucks goes from almost 120 down to a low of 68.39. Uh, the bounce for the 382 there would be about 87.48 for Starbucks. And Starbucks looking for about a $4.50 move. So only about a 5%. And Airbnb, you got some more action there. You're talking about what, 9%, 8% move in Airbnb? And I think that's their IPO price, somewhere around there. Maybe that's just support, nonetheless, below their IPO price. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back for the opening bell. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you do have the uh, S and P's, the markets accelerating higher right into that open. I mean, just in the last since I came on the program, you're up about 15 points in the S and P's right now, trading about 4100. You're negative by 15 on the session right now. Nasdaq 100, you're negative by 89. That's about seven tenths percent. Dow off about half a percent. Jump around to some of the companies with earnings and some action. Kevin Hicks mentioned it. Pinterest, some strong numbers. They give a little bit of it back at the open. You're up 16.9% for Pinterest, so let's jump into their numbers. Climbs on user numbers and Elliott investment, even as financials disappoint. So I saw something that, uh, yeah, Elliott is now the biggest investor in Pinterest, uh, and they put out a note after these earnings uh, with full support for the CEO and conviction in the company. If you're going to be the biggest stockholder, you probably should have some conviction in the company. Otherwise, you'd be selling, right? Wouldn't that be the case? They miss on earnings, 11 cents versus 18. They miss on revenue, 666, watch out, versus 667. Global monthly active users, check this one out, okay? Declined by 5% from a year earlier. So analysts were looking for 431. So they are dropping. This is, I was, uh, there was a great analyst, I gotta get his name on Bloomberg last night, talking about it. He was pretty bearish on this equity. Uh, and he made some great points, and he was saying in the long run, okay, and I'll get his name over the break because I should. I'm talking about what he's talking about. I'm not even putting his name out there. Uh, but one of the points he was making is that they came in with decent margins, okay? Now, the company said in estimates third quarter revenue will grow mid-single digits on a year-over-year -year percentage. The market was looking for 12.7, so they're not even growing there. A lot of it had to do with their margins that they were making as well. And what he said is that, listen, Pinterest is in a business of advertising, and Google has products that compete with Pinterest. And you're going to see that competition erode the types of margins and growth that they can potentially get. And you add into that that they actually have a declining global user base, okay? And that is a recipe for longer-term troubles in this equity. Take that for what it's worth. I thought it was great analysis. Uh, you have a stock skyrocketing higher that is uh, an internet stock that is losing 5% of their users from a year earlier. Now, keeping in mind, folks, a year earlier was not some depths of the pandemic, okay? A year earlier was coming into uh, the middle of 2021. Yes, we were still living a different lifestyle than we are right now in terms of coming out of that pandemic, but it wasn't like the statistics are so skewed from the pandemic hitting like some of those numbers were in the middle of 2020. All right, they are losing 5% of their users from a year ago. I mean, to put it in context, folks, that's 20 million people. It doesn't take a lot of 20 million drop-offs or 5% to get you down from 430 million to 350 or 300 million. So that would be a number. Surprising you get that type of a pop, but nonetheless, they thought it was going to be worse. So I guess it could always be worse. All right, what else do we have going on? Oh, this article. My dad was talking about this last night. I was reading it. I had to bring it up this morning. Pretty remarkable. You take a look at it. So Barclays, they're going to be bailing out some Peloton holders. So the bank will buy notes at an original price after they had a blunder that had them pushing out too much paper, um, basically. They revealed Monday the list of securities that it will buy back at their original price required by regulators due to a paperwork error. It's a $17.6 billion program that is set to effectively rescue many bondholders from the market plunges of the past year. One of the most extreme is almost $2 million of notes tied to Peloton. Those shares, uh, those notes have, of course, cratered as the company has cratered. The market value of those notes is just eight pennies on the dollar, folks. And what are they going to do? They're going to have to buy them back at the exact price that they would have in terms of on the books, 102.1, okay? Yeah, that's more than a 12 bagger, of course, from eight pennies to 102. Uh, structured notes and bonds that offer indirect exposure to assets from equity price. Uh, so more than 3,000 of them are affected by Barclays. Uh, it was flagged in March when the bank realized it sold billions worth of securities more than it had registered for sale with the SEC. Net losses have already reached almost a billion dollars. Billion dollars. And they said in here, in the article I was reading, I was reading another article last night, 
saying that basically banks usually just uh, file very broad and unambi ambiguous offerings where they can just offer whatever they want. Somehow they blundered it and they blundered it to the tune of a billion dollars, man. Um, yeah, to put it lightly. Anyway. Okay, what else is happening? Um, well, Nancy Pelosi may land in Taiwan. I mean, that's going to escalate tensions with China. It seems like, you know, I know it gets political, but uh, China with some pretty harsh rhetoric, man, just for the speaker landing there. Now, obviously, there's a lot at stake. Um, one of these articles I was reading, where was it? Is this it? Yeah, this is going to be it, too. So you had a couple articles in here. One of them was just talking about it. This one was talking about how, was it? Yeah, how China could respond. Um, one of the things they were saying is if she visits maybe China in retaliation, even after she leaves, flies planes over the mainland Taiwan, and Taiwan has to figure out what they do with China, flying hostile planes directly over their mainland. God forbid they, God forbid they ever shoot one down and escalate things. Um, pretty escalating speak from the chairman uh, G over there and we'll see how it plays out and and one of the reasons that I'm sure they're worried uh, this picture circulating I hadn't seen it myself but uh, Nancy Pelosi not not going to shy away from speaking out for democracy and this is her uh, celebrating Tiananmen Square the in 1989 right oh no 1991 okay yeah, so the Tiananmen was in 1989. She goes over there in 91, um, holding that banner in Beijing with other co congressional uh, members to those who died for democracy in China. So they're obviously a little on edge as she goes over to Taiwan in terms of what she may do over there. All right, let's jump back to a little market analysis. J.P. Morgan's Kalinovic. Stands apart and saying stocks will rebound. One chart I wanted to pull up here, opinion piece, as in not an opinion piece, he has an opinion. This is a news piece about uh, an analyst position, is a way to say it. Goldman strategists say too early to expect Fed policy pivot. Who are you going to believe, Goldman or J.P. Morgan? Okay. Uh, now, one thing, he was voted Kalinovic, the number one equity leg strategist in the last year's institutional investor survey. So it doesn't mean anything. Past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results, as they say, but He's not a no one, to put it lightly. Uh, and one of the points he makes, all right, uh, stock valuation still relatively cheap. The 10-year median, now this is the forward 12-month PE. A lot of talk about earnings potential over the next year from inflation, right? So if you get those revisions, if you get the misses on earnings, this dramatically changes. Okay, let's even expand it out. But pretty remarkable, when you look, the multiples far off where they were. I mean, look where we came into COVID, right? So we're talking about back before the acceleration into 2020 in terms of the multiples we're dealing with, okay? Now, at that time, to bring things back to where we were, okay, at that time, you're probably talking about an S&P at 3,000, somewhere in here, 3,100, as earnings have risen. You've had the S&P rise. And meanwhile, the ratio of 12-month forward PE is at the same level. Those earnings come back down. You could see the S&P come back down. It's going to be important earnings season. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&P sitting right at about 4,100 right now. Little volatility in both directions. You sit basically right where you open. NASDAQ 100 trading higher, though. we got the NASDAQ 100 approaching 13,000. We're at 12,924. Dow pulling back on the open. we got some divergence going on here, right? Dow off 281. NASDAQ barely in the red. And s and is basically sitting where you open, negative by 20 points. Jumping over to commodities. Crude catches a little bit of a bid. We're near $95. And gold pulls back a bit at about 1798 jumping back to that article real quick to finish it up one other data point in there i wanted to talk about uh futures positioning is the most bearish since 2016 all right check that out uh short positioning data indicates that kalanova could be right in forecasting a sustained recovery at least in the short term city strategists including chris montego said short positions across most markets are facing steep losses after last week's rally increasing the risk of a short squeeze and equity upside from forced unwinds of large legacy shorts uh it's a big number when you look at it futures positioning biggest number since 2016 you add that into the acceleration we've had in the markets, it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here. Okay, jumping around to some of the other stocks that are moving this morning. Caterpillar, they're a little bit lower. We'll jump over. Uh, beat the forecast revenue, but slightly short of consensus. Sales hurt by its exit from Russia, many international companies, as well as supply chain, and also saw elevated costs during the quarter. That's like the, the gold trifecta right now, right? Russia, supply chain and costs from inflation. Any company can say that to try and explain away almost any earnings they have. Caterpillar trades down by about 5%. Let's see where Pinterest and Uber are trading after their numbers. Pinterest gives it back a little bit off 15.2. Uber, little volatility, gives it back a little bit, still up about 12%, some big numbers for those companies. Royal Caribbean's lower after uh, they have a billion debt offering going on now. Interesting that they're lower because you could have seen this one coming. There's Royal Caribbean. Now, is that their debt offering, maybe? Because what happened? Carnival did this, what, a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I think this drop-off, maybe this drop-off here that they pushed out paper already. So you have the cruise ships trading lower. Let's see how some of the airlines are trading right now. Americans down a percent with the market right now. Delta down 2%. You had Boeing accelerating higher yesterday. They give back some of those gains. Look at Boeing, man. Boeing already below almost all of yesterday's action. You're trading down 2.7% for Boeing. Let's see how the big dogs are trading. Amazon holding up 
flat right now in this market that's negative. Microsoft shares down 1%. Apple shares down half a percent right now. Tesla, we check out positive by one tenth percent let's see how the growth stocks are trading we jump over to arc positive by a percent what's trading higher in arc there it is zoom up 1.6 percent they have a big holding uh oh, roku catches a little bit of a lift up 5.5 percent what else they have DraftKings. ah oh, there you go uh gambling coming to massachusetts we got a lot of boston massachusetts listeners out there pretty sure i saw that they had reached a deal for gambling in Massachusetts on sporting events. You're gonna be able to bet on college as well. You just cannot bet on in-state games. Probably something that makes sense. Here's what I'll say to you though, folks. Why isn't poker being passed in any of this stuff, okay? It's crazy that I can now be in Massachusetts and bet on some college athletics game going on in Rhode Island if I want to. And meanwhile, I can't even play online poker, a skill game that you can actually beat the rake in. Uh, the rake in many of these online gambling companies, unbeatable, even for some of the best sports gamblers out there, okay? Maybe not for the best. It is a beatable game. But the rake in sports gambling is so extreme that it is very difficult to make money in. It's a big difference versus uh, a game like poker, depending on what the rake is. But historically, when you look at it, but uh, it kind of irks me as a poker player that online gambling for sporting events, including college athletics, okay, is now just taking flames and fire and going to be everywhere. And online poker is kind of left in the wayside. I imagine that will will come into things at some point. Uh, but nonetheless, Boston, uh, quite a gambling hub. They will have sports gambling, and it may even happen by this NFL season. And we're coming into the preseason right now. So it's crazy, man. They just turn it on, and it's like, boom. Here you go. Turn on the numbers off of that DraftKings app to uh, the fine people in Massachusetts and get them on board. And there you go. Let's jump over to Penn. So that's Penn Gaming, right? Uh, and that is the company that owns Barstool Sports, I believe. Let me pull this up. Yeah, it's going to be because that's quite the pullback. Yeah, Penn National Gaming. So they own Barstool along with uh, 44 properties across 20 states. They got a lot of tracks as well. Uh, gambling, sports betting, online, video games, uh, in terms of gambling, still sitting pretty pretty low. These companies really got ahead of themselves in terms of the gambling, man. Whoops, I meant to do a three-year weekly. I mean, the COVID depths, this run that Penn had from under four bucks to 142, one of the best runs out there for a company, you know, they thought they were going BK when they traded down to $3.75 when the world was not even be able to attend a track, right? But nonetheless, up to 142 for Penn uh, and back to DraftKings, trading up 5%. S&Ps were negative 17 points. NASDAQ negative by 21. The Dow pulling back. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on in some of these indices. No, that's not going to be right. Yeah, no, maybe that is going to be right. Yeah, that's going to be right. Uh, lots of red in the S&P 500, right? You jump over to the NASDAQ 100. What's up on the NASDAQ 100? We've got some healthcare stocks trading higher. Comcast a little bit higher. Amazon barely in the green right now. Some of those growth stocks we talked about. CrowdStrike, Zoom, DocuSign, PayPal, Costco. Uh, just enough to have the NASDAQ 100 not down as much as the other indices. And the Dow getting hurt by just uh, many of these equities in the red. Visa down 2.3%. That's probably hitting it. JP Morgan down a full percent. Microsoft, Apple as well, both in the red. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities, other equities we have going on. Uh, yeah, Cowan. So, so Cowan Group, uh, they're going to get sold to TD Bank for $1.3 billion in cash as they consider continue to accommodate, uh, consolidate, excuse me. Let's see, Avis, they reported better than expected quarterly results, benefited from strong demand and stringent cost controls. Jump over to car. They give it all back just that quick, down 3.3%. These car companies, man. Uh, let's put them on a five-year daily. Now, remember that this became a Reddit phenomenon. Uh, Avis, up to 545, you were sitting at $324 as recently as April. This thing trades down to... Yeah, 150 and up to 175. Just crazy, man. The moves. Oh, did Zoom have their numbers too? And they give it back? No. Oh, that Zoom 
Look at look at me. Zoom Info Technologies. See how this happens? Uh, their symbol, Zoom. This must drive Zoom crazy, man. Uh, Zoom is ZM. Their symbol. They're still up 2.3%. I wonder if they're getting a lift because of, of Zoom Info Technologies numbers. It's always possible. That one's not even pulling up for me. Yeah. All right, back to the S&Ps. We got the S&P right now, negative by 22 points, folks. NASDAQ negative by 46. Stay tuned. We got one more segment. I'll be coming right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets pulling back. S&Ps negative by 29 points right now. You're trading at 4,091. We jump over to JetBlue with their numbers. You're up to 875 in the overnight session. And then, boom, this morning, out with their numbers, you're down 6.9% for JetBlue. Getting into what they had to say. Uh, return to profit in the third quarter, but not just yet, as they lose $188 million in the second quarter on record revenue. All right. You want to talk about costs and inflation, folks? 35% increase in costs per available seat mile compared to three years ago. 
That's all their profit. Bye bye. <coughs> Excuse me. Their capacity is going to be down as much as 3% compared to three years ago. Think about that. When you have population growth and you have an acceleration of the people wanting to travel, we do have less business travel out there, okay? Uh, but they estimate that that's going to change in terms of what they're going to get. Revenue per available seat mile would be up as much as 23% this quarter as consumers swallowed high fares that JetBlue expects to offset a jump in fuel costs. Higher prices, that's what they're saying. We're going to charge higher prices. We're going to make 23% more per an available seat mile, and we're going to offset all of those costs. Ooh, the market says good luck, but we're trading lower this morning. And head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks, if you want to learn all about trading. Our man, Basil Chapman, he is up next for the Tiger Technicians Hour. But a week from tomorrow, folks, time is flying, man. A week from tomorrow is August 10th. We're still going to be in earnings season. we got volatility everywhere. Basil's hosting a live all-day webinar, the Chapman Wave Methodology. You can sign up right now. When you sign up, folks, you get an emailed booklet sent to you immediately. Okay, so sign up now. You also gain access to the opening call immediately. His newsletter. You get all of this for $295. Check it out on the front page. Basil will be talking about his entire methodology, a five-hour webinar. It will be archived. You gain access to his opening call as well, folks. Okay, you jump over to the opening call. That's $149 value right there that you're talking about on the opening call. You get that free. So you're basically only paying $149, $147, for the course if you add in the opening call. Check it out and stay tuned. Our man Basil's up next. Of course, live programming all day, folks. Have a great Tuesday.